Hello everyone and welcome to our Thursday assignment. Uh, I went ahead and did these at a little later time in the afternoon so that I wouldn't end up yawning through them. Sorry about that on the last one. I guess you kind of learn as you go what's going to work and what's not going to work. Uh, notice that our instructions for this assignment are going to be basically the same. Uh, the only thing that I changed on this assignment is that I made sure to put to bold the label for each new video. So as you're uh, beginning your notes down here, I would like for you to uh, label and bold the beginning of each new video and then you can do the rest of the notes from the video in um, in the whatever uh, unbolded font you want to on, want to use um, just so that I can really pick out and distinguish where your uh, labels begin. Um, for those of you that were uh, having issues with Word or that um, weren't able to get uh, the scans done, um, you can always do these in your Google Docs account. You do have a Google Docs account linked to your University of Akron uh, at uh, the zips.uakron.edu is actually a fully functional Google account. Uh, so if you want to do those on a Google Docs um, and then download it as a document and then upload it into Springboard, um, you definitely can do that. And notice that um, the, the due date for this assignment is by September 9th at midnight. Um, so we will go ahead then and get started on this. Um, so here we are in day number four. We're going to make it through uh, most of uh, chapter two uh, and the beginning of chapter three. We may actually make it through the uh, entire chapter three. Uh, so the last time that we were here, we were talking a little bit about uh, bonding. Uh, we looked at things like uh, covalent bonding, where we find that the... Uh, we find that we have a sharing of electrons and then ionic bonding where we have uh, we have the donation and the exception of the the bonds um, and so the one we're going to start on today um, is hydrogen bonding and talking about uh, why hydrogen bonds especially in water molecules are so important so um, here what you can see is um, We've got our uh, oxygen molecule, and then we have our two uh, hydrogen molecules. And so um, in a oxygen and um, a hydrogen bonding situation, which of course is water, uh, we see that the uh, hydrogen bonds are formed when um, the water molecules are attracted uh, to one another. And so we have a covalent bond making this molecule. We've got our oxygen there in the middle, and then we have our two little Mickey Mouse eared um, hydrogen ions. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you can see that um, the hydrogen is uh, attracted to the oxygen uh, in water, and that uh, forms a hydrogen bond. Um, that's one of the reasons that um, water is so unique, is that it's got um, this hydrogen bond in it, uh, making it so that uh, liquid water at room temperature is a liquid. Um, so that's uh, one of the ways that hydrogen bonds uh, form. And so as a summary, just kind of a, a review of what we've got here, uh, we have covalent bonding, um, which we can see here. We've got this very strong hold uh, between the um, two electrons, and um, they are sharing with one another to form a very stable molecule. And covalent bonding is very, very strong. Uh, ionic bonding is when we have uh, two oppositely charged ions that form a compound, uh, like in this case the uh, NaCl or sodium chloride or uh, salt. Uh, we've got the positively charged sodium attracted to the negatively charged chlorine, uh, making this uh, sodium compound. Um, and then in hydrogen bonds, we have an attraction between the slightly positively charged hydrogen atom uh, of one molecule and the slightly negatively charged atom of another molecule. And hydrogen bonds are weak bonds. So we have strong covalent, strong ionic, and then we have weak bonds in uh, hydrogen bonding. So uh, moving on to talk a little bit more about water and why water is so important to all life here on Earth. Um, 
Water has these hydrogen bonds, and they make uh, water cohesive. Uh, when something is said to be cohesive, uh, that means that it sticks together. If you've ever seen uh, uh, an animal like a spider uh, that is um, seeming to sit on top of the water and it's got its legs down and you see that little divot as it's pressing into the top of the water. Um, it is exerting pressure on the surface of the water, uh, but water has um, these molecules shaped the way that they are and held together by these hydrogen bonds, and they're enough to give water a surface tension. So one of the things about water that is so important is that it's got a surface tension that will not break uh, until a certain point. And so that makes water cohesive. It's high surface tension. Uh, then we can see a little bit more specifically uh, the pressure applied downwards to the water surface and you've got the V-shaped water molecules pressing back up um, so that's giving it its, uh, its surface tension. Uh, water has other unusual properties that make it critical to life uh, besides that cohesion, the way that it is stuck together. Uh, water also has a very large heat capacity. It has a low density as a solid. Uh, it tends to make ice and ice floats. Uh, and it is a very good solvent. Think of all of the different things that you're able to dissolve in water. So we're going to talk about each one of these as we come up here in the next couple of slides. So uh, in cohesion, one of the reasons that um, water makes droplets when it falls out of the sky uh, is because water molecules have this cohesion sticking them together. And so when they stick together, uh, instead of uh, just gushing everybody with water as raindrops fall, instead we have rain in drops. And so uh, it's got this cohesion. Cohesion is also important because it makes the water molecules stick together um, as they move up in the um, transportation system of a tree, move up the uh, trunk of the tree and up through the leaves. Uh, because water has this, um, this cohesion, they're able to actually stick together and starting in the roots and being pulled upwards are able to get all the way up into the leaves of the tree where eventually um, they're transpired back into the environment. And so as each water molecule evaporates, it pulls additional water molecules up behind it because of the stickiness of the hydrogen bonds that link those water molecules together. And so if we didn't have this, we wouldn't be able to have this transportation system. We wouldn't be able to get 300 foot tall trees uh, that get water all the way down from in the very, uh, the deep reaches of those roots all the way up to the leaves. So uh, the next property of water that makes it important to life is its heat capacity. And so water has a very high heat capacity. What that means is that um, as energy is released in the form of heat from the sun, uh, that sun energy is going to uh, disrupt some of the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. You can see those water molecules and their hydrogen bond breaking apart. And so then, as new hydrogen bonds are formed almost as quickly as they are disrupted, you can see here they're disrupting and they're attaching back together, and they're disrupting and they're attaching back together. Uh, because of this heat energy from the sun being used to break apart and reform the hydrogen bonds, the water temperature doesn't increase by much. So what you can see here in the background, if you look into the background, um, is that we're looking here at the ocean and the tropical areas. And so in areas that have uh, large bodies of water, like around islands or near the ocean, um, the molecules that make up sand, on the other hand, don't have so many hydrogen bonds. So the heat of the sun just increases the temperature. So what we find is uh, we get lots of really hot times there around uh, around the beaches, um, but the water temperature isn't going to change so much. And also we find that happening in you. As you know, your body temperature is 98.6 degrees, and that doesn't vary a whole lot. Uh, if it varied a whole lot, imagine that if you were um, laying out in the sun and you were getting a suntan, um, as the heat came down, if your body temperature uh, rose and went back down with the amount of sun, um, 
you would uh, get cold really, really fast, or you would heat up really, really, really fast. And so since 60% of your body is water, this helps you to maintain a relatively constant body temperature. Also, in areas on the coast, it helps the coastal areas to not swing so much as far as the, uh, as the temperature goes. Um, the third property that water has is that it has a low density as a solid. So when you drop your ice cubes into your glass of water, you know that the ice doesn't sink down to the bottom. Uh, the ice is going to float up on the top. And that's one of the special properties of water is that it has a lower density when it's frozen. Uh, most substances, most substances, um, as they freeze, actually become thicker and they get smaller and then um, they would sink. But frozen water, uh, the molecules as they freeze together into this crystalline lattice, this keeps them actually further apart and therefore less dense and so the ice cubes are going to float up to the top. And if you think about uh, how this is important in nature, um, if you have a pond and a pond gets frozen, uh, the freezing happens on the top of the pond. It's not like the water on the top of the pond freezes and then it sinks down to the bottom because if that happened, it would kill all the life as it squished them all at the bottom of the pond. Um, Water actually floating is one of the reasons that uh, life underneath a pond is able to survive. And so uh, it is said that, uh, that water, when it freezes, has a lower density as a solid. Um, water is also a good solvent. We actually call water the universal solvent because when you place uh, nearly anything into water, um, it is going to uh, dissolve. Whoop, sorry, I guess I have a meeting. Um, going back to what we were looking at. Um, water is a good solvent. So when it is placed in, uh, when ionic compounds like, uh, like salt, or if you look at sugar, um, if you look at things like, uh, what types of things do you put into water? You put uh, sugars, you can dissolve salt, uh, you can dissolve um, crystal light or Kool-Aid. Um, water is such a good solvent that it allows things to be broken down um, when it gets into the water and then um, it helps to uh, keep it dissolved and therefore things can travel around, uh, like for example, in your blood. Uh, your blood uh, has lots and lots of water to it. Um, and the water can dissolve things like salt, and that's what helps your um, blood to be able to carry certain types of signals and be able to carry certain types of uh, substances around in it. And so um, that is a very, very important part of water. Um, I'll go ahead and stop.